Hello and welcome to this webinar on unseen poetry analysis for years 10 and 11. We're looking at the poem Books by Erica Young and by the end of the poem, by the end of the webinar, not the end of the poem, I hope that we will understand the structure and the themes or ideas, imagery and language and also the effects on readers. Now this is the poem, and because it's a five minute webinar, I don't want to take any time reading it. So pause the webinar and have a look at this poem. Now the ideal when you're reading an unseen poem for homework, for an assignment in an exam is really to read the poem three times. The first time you read the poem, think about what you don't understand. Are there any words that are unclear? And does it matter? Can you guess? The second time you read the poem, try and get an understanding of the poem as a whole. And then the third time, really go into analysis in detail using SMILE. Now, what does SMILE stand for? It stands for structure, meaning, imagery, language, and effects and environment. Now, for this poem, we're looking at structure. Like, let's think about the title, the first line, how does it develop? Think about the, st the stanza lengths, cesura and enjouement, punctuation, rhyme and rhythm, and the viewpoint. So those are all structural devices. When we think about this poem, it's interesting that it starts with a quotation. Yoga Lewis Borges, the universe which others call the library. So before the poem proper, it starts with a quotation, which is really fascinating. The idea that it's, it's saying is that everything about everything, the whole of the world, the universe, in fact, is contained in a library, is contained in books. So even before we have the poem proper, we have this idea in, in the structure that books are in, eminently important. However, when we read the poem, it's not about the universe. It starts off with books which are stitched up in the center with coarse white thread. So you've got this sense of books that are really old fashioned, handmade books, coarse and white um, are interesting words that kind of almost contrast each other. And by the end of the poem, you've got books by men in love with the letter O and books which smell of earth whose pages turned turn and it seems unfinished somehow so although it starts about talking about books that are the universe everything and anything in it it's it's interesting that it talks about handmade kind of personal books and and books that are very kind of personal it's quite an uh, introspective and personal poem in that way rather than wide expanding uh, kind of wide spreading and spanning ideas that are astronomical or intergalactic. So th those are some of the structural features. You'll notice also that it's 16 um, lines. Some of the lines seem to shrink and then expand again and again, perhaps talking about how books can really, really be very personal individual and then they expand into wider issues. The emphasis smile would be meaning, messages or themes. What are the issues and ideas that are explored? And perhaps there are neon lights, really vivid words and phrases that reveal why the poem has been written and the ideas behind it. So when we look at this one, I think some of the neon lights might be about books of illumination surrounded by darkness. So books that can show what things are but people can still remain ignorant, it seems to be talking about. And here, another neon light for me perhaps would be a book with book fungus blooming over its pages. So it seems to be this idea that books can be neglected, even though they have all this information and wealth of knowledge, they can really be neglected. So some of these ideas are about understanding and ignorance, about love and neglect of learning and education. When we think about imagery, that's really about the techniques that the writer has used. So we think about mopes, metaphors, onomatopoeia, personification, exaggeration, similes, sensory description and sound effects. So in this, it's really clear that lots of different kinds of imagery are used. We've got personification of the weeping grapefruits. We've got this idea that stars are splutted out, almost trying to put stars out as if they're candles. Um, but we've also got this idea that things are blooming with fungus so this idea that it's spreading then we think about language keywords that aren't necessarily poetic devices and techniques and vocabulary and then the use of the tense and person so we really can see that this is comic there are a lot of these in jokes and puns that are used in this 
in this poem about books. So you've got this idea of long haired Frenchmen with uncut pages. So the hair is long and the pages haven't been cut. or the hair hasn't been cut. You've got this idea that stars, books about inns whose stars have been splattered out. So we know the most famous inn and the star is about the birth of Jesus, the Christmas story. So thinking about have the stars been splattered out because they're drinking at the pub or is it to do with um, the ideas about religion have been withheld so it's really playing on lots of different levels it's quite clever the language seems quite simple at first but when you look at it it's quite comic then the effect in the environment what's the overall tone what's the overall purpose the background well the overall tone as i've said is quite comic quite tongue-in-cheek it seems to really force you to consider the purpose of books why do people have books books on beaches with sunglass colored pages are they just for recreation books with fanatical footnotes books with men in love with the letter o the o seems to be a joke when people men are like oh 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 rather than the letter o so it's looking at books are books about pleasure are books about pain are books about understanding or are books about maintaining our ignorance so actually the effect seems to be that this is really getting us to question what we know about books and how we treat them what's next well the next step i would suggest is that you write your own poetry analysis analysis go back to the beginning of the webinar and use my notes to help you write up your essay thank you for joining me and goodbye <laughs>